Hello and welcome to Livewire's newest show, The Pitch. I'm Ali Selvi and today we're on the hunt for the ASX's next big growth story. To do that, we're joined by Michael Wayne from Medallion Financial. Thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. Really Thanks. excited to feature you on the show. Yeah, glad to be here. Looking forward to it. I'd love to know, where are you finding opportunity right now? Yeah, so at the moment we're focusing heavily on the mid cap part of the market as well as the small cap area as well. The performance of the mid caps and the small caps has deviated significantly from the ASX top 50 really in the last 18 months or so. But nevertheless, that's a part of the market that's generating significant earnings growth and compounded on an annualised basis. So when we look at the revenue growth profile, the earnings growth profile of the small and mid cap part of the market, it's far more appealing uh, and more attractive than say the ASX 20. So that's an area of the market that we're focusing in on at the moment. Always with these things, it's unsure as to the timeline where that valuation gap closes. However, on a you know, one to two year basis, we see that mean reversion occurring and the value starting to play out in those areas. Finally, the second sort of main area that we're seeing value at the moment is uh, low PE companies. And by low PE companies, we still want those that are growing at a decent clip, but for whatever the reason, the market has them trading on a low PE ratio. Because if we look again across the market, low PE stocks are trading at a significant discount to the 20 year average relative to the rest of the market. So again, over time, we think that that discount to the long term average will mean revert and the value will play out for investors. Okay, I guess two questions here off the back of that. You talked about a mean reversion or expecting a mean reversion in small and mid caps. Often that happens post a recession, which we haven't seen. Why do you believe we will definitely see that reversion? And then on the low PE stocks, do you feel like they could be cheap for a reason right now? Well, I think it's a symptom of the environment that we've come from. Uh, we went through a very challenging 12, 18 months where there was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fears around inflation and interest rates moving higher. And off the back of that, a lot of the smaller companies and mid cap companies, which have long duration earnings, so they're the businesses where earnings are expected to really kick in in a couple of years from now, they got penalised the most in that environment. And also it's a psychology type thing where people like to get rid of, keep their large, what they perceive to be quality businesses and cast aside anything that might be small or illiquid uh, or perceived to be risky. So I think there's been an overreaction to a degree on those smaller caps and some of those mid caps as well have been cast aside despite the fact that their earnings and revenue profile looks very good. But we also look at the larger part of the Australian market and we don't find it that compelling. The reality is the earnings growth within that part of the market has been fairly subdued for a number of years now. You look at the, the large banks, for instance, earnings growth has been very anemic. Dividend per shares have actually fallen um, over the last couple of years for, for some of the banks. Um, and then you look at the miners as well. The miners have had a, a decent run, the likes of BHP and Rio have held up very well. But on a longer term basis, we look at the China story um, and we come to the belief that China has probably reached peak consumption in a lot of commodities, such as coal for steel and iron ore for steel. So we're just a little bit more optimistic about other parts of the market, that being the mid and small caps, and trying to unearth the next emerging leaders, which will come to the fore in the years and decades to come. We've seen growth stocks soar on hopes of Fed cuts later this year. What does it take for a growth stock to make it into your portfolio? Yeah, so from our standpoint, we want growth businesses where we have a good line of sight as to their earnings growth over the medium to longer term. We think it's very important that these businesses are able to deliver compounded earnings growth throughout the cycle. Um, but we also have a, a pretty detailed filtering system. You know, we look for businesses that have had consecutive years of revenue growth, for instance, consecutive years of earnings growth. Ideally, we want to see businesses whose margins are expanding. We want to see companies that have a very high return on equity relative to the peers in the industry, low levels of debt. And all of this has to not only be present with the business, but we also then have to see it being reasonably valued relative to other, other peers within the market, but also just fairly valued from the way that we see the growth playing out for the, for the years to come. So there is obviously a high hurdle because there are you know over 2,000 companies on the market. So you've got to filter it down and try and work out which businesses can 
deliver that strong, consistent earnings growth year upon year throughout the economic cycle and win market share and all those important buzzwords that people talk about. Okay, let's put all that theory into practice. What stock do you think could be the ASX's next big growth story? So the business that we like at the moment is a company called Polynovo. So Polynovo has had moments of euphoria followed by moments of despair over the last couple of years. It's still, still well and truly off its all-time highs reached in, in 2020, but the business has improved considerably. So this is a company that came out of the CSIRO. Uh, effectively, they've developed a product um, used to treat burns victims or, or, or those people that are suffering from large wounds, for instance. It's a biodegradable mesh that allows the skin cells to regenerate themselves uh, and then basically prepares the groundwork so that a skin graft can be done over the top. I know it's pretty gory sort of stuff, <laughs> but it's very important technology. Um, and what it's doing is they're really usurping the traditional forms of treatments, which often involve using animal byproducts or animal skins, pig skins for instance. So this is a new technology, the chances of infection or something going wrong is diminished. The business is growing revenues in the vicinity of 60%. They're really sort of looking to bed down the US market where they've increased their sales team by 60 odd headcount. So they're investing in building up the sales team to now go out and commercialise this procedure, spread the word, build the narrative if you like. Um, but then down the track, they've got the opportunity and they're slowly taking steps in this direction to expand into places like India. Um, and then also look for other alternative uses of this technology as well. So very interesting business. They have reached that inflection point, which we like to see where they've turned EBITDA positive after years of, of making losses. Uh, and that revenue growth is accelerating. So when you're seeing revenue growth accelerate, it's often a very exciting story. So that's one that we quite like at the moment, Polynovo. Okay, well, I really enjoyed that interview and definitely learned something about growth stocks, if not about skin grafting. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you did, why not give it a like? Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're adding so much great content just like this every single week.